Hello and welcome to Nigeria, the road to 2019, a series of programs where Arise News places the audience and the choice at the heart of our coverage of the upcoming presidential elections. I'm Charles Anyagulu. Coming up in the next 30 minutes, all the news, comment and analysis that provide unrivaled insight into Nigeria 2019, including as another big political player throws his hat into the ring for the presidency in the upcoming ballot, we ask whether Nigerians are going to be convinced convinced by someone like the Senate President Bukola Saraki or indeed any of the others. We have analysis from two seasoned internationally recognized observers of the Nigerian political scene. Now, just in case you needed reminding that the 2019 election is just around the corner, two big political players have been making news in the last few hours, declaring their ambition, picking up their presidential nomination form, promising to make Nigeria a better place, and no doubt sizing each other up, whilst the rest of the country sizes them up. These two men happen to be the current president of the Senate, Bukola Saraki, and former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, both of whom are at the moment placing as much premium as they can on being as anti the incumbent President Muhammadu Buhari as possible. First, though, let's pick up on the one that appears to be the most current news, and that's the announcement by Senator Bukola Saraki that he'd like to run for president in 2019. Mr. Saraki is surely one of the most high-profile politicians so far to declare his intention to run against President Buhari. However, his announcement came at an event which was hosting young political hopefuls of tomorrow, overseen by the Not Too Young to Run campaign, which seeks to remain non-partisan. Mr. Saraki, who was recently cleared of corruption charges, which he said were politically motivated, apparently didn't get enough attention when he dropped the hint of his presidential ambition a few weeks ago in an interview. So he decided to say it again, perhaps more loudly this time. So, is anyone listening? Well, at least our next two guests are. Joining me in the studio, Professor Jibo Ibrahim, Director of the Center for Democracy and Development here in Abuja, who also has a PhD in political science from the University of Bordeaux in France, and was the former Deputy Dean of Political Science at the Amadou Bello University in Zaria, Nigeria. And Professor Chudi Uwazurike, Senior Fellow of the Institute for Government and leadership in Africa and former member of the House of Representatives who also has a PhD from Harvard University. Gentlemen, thank you very much indeed for joining us. I'll start with you since you're sitting closest to me, Professor Jibo. What's wrong with Mr. Saraki declaring his ambition on the not too young to run platform? I mean, he's a politician, he wants the best platform. The not too young to run is a popular movement that uh, I think most political leaders will want to leverage on. So why not? Well, the problem was that the letter inviting him to the event stated that this not too young to run movement is non-partisan. And by making a formal declaration of his intention in that uh, space provided by the organization, it gave the impression that he had been invited by this movement for the purpose of making a partisan declaration. And it was because of that that the movement felt he had betrayed their trust and immediately came out with a clarification that he should not have made a declaration that is partisan at their event, which was supposed to be non-partisan and open to all contestants who want to engage on ideas. Mm. So, so the problem, Professor Wazurike, is, is that appears to be that he tried to promote his own vested interest first and ahead of what the movement actually wants, because they obviously, as Professor Jiba said, didn't ask him to run for office. Um, so I is that going to hurt him? Well, I'm not too sure is as big a problem as uh, everyone's making of it, including the not too young uh, 
the wrong group. I read the statement and I read the, the response from the Senate president. Uh, there's no question that this is uh, well, on some sort of novel terrain in this. Uh, uh, I, I had him. He didn't say he came there to make his announcement. In the course of his speech, he simply said, and let me say, I'm also running, and mm. so on and so forth. I'm satisfied that uh, these clarifications have been issued right on the ground rules a little clear, both for uh, those who may come after him. And I remember that uh, uh, very clearly the, uh, the not uh, too young to run group uh, is also saying that they'll be holding a series of these dialogues. If I was them, if I were them, rather, I would rather actually embrace candidates who come on the podium to probably not to announce mm. as if it's a declaration, but to say just in case. By the way, I'm also running. Mm. Uh, I see this is just much ado about very little, in my view. So, P Professor Jibo, just following up on, on what Professor Wazirike was saying there, Mr. Saraki, of course, a former governor of Kwara State in north central Nigeria before he became Senate president. Is it fair to say that as Nigeria's third most senior politician, he is inarguably one of the most influential politicians in Nigeria. So technically, what happened there probably won't have much effect on him. Well, that might very well be the case. At the end of the day, I think uh, Mr. Saraiki will be judged on uh, what his program is, what his record is, mm. and what he proposes to uh, Nigerians. So in that sense, he's on the same playing ground with other players who are all hoping that they would be attractive enough to get the support of the Nigerians they are seeking. Mm. So the controversy, um, Professor Wazirike, that Mr. Saraki used the not too young to run movement to declare his ambition, um, with Mr. Kataraki saying Nigerian youths will be given all the opportunities to realize their political or their potential within his national framework that he says guarantees inclusiveness. Um, the movement not happy about that, um, trying to distance themselves from him. I mean, do you think he has distanced or potentially alienated young people in this country by that? Well, I'm not sure that uh, uh, that would be the case. Uh, uh, it's very clear that uh, there is a bit of uh, a temper tantrum that might or might not go away. But a presidential election in Nigeria is, uh, is a movie fiesta of mm. all kinds of interests, of all kinds of issues. I mean, he really hasn't started. As far as the rest of the country is really concerned, he hasn't quite declared. He made a statement that he was about to. So we'll see what he says. You know, which is when he formally declares, we see a policy statement, as Professor Jibin was saying. We see uh, a number of issues. I mean, there are target issues in this country. We need to know where he stands on them. Mm. At this point, uh, even being the president of the uh, Senate is not enough because there he is simply the prime minister of Paris among uh, uh, 109 other senators and mm. so on. But once you step into the ring as a candidate, the terms are different. The issues are different. The source of... Uh, Questions he will meet on the campaign trail are different. He hasn't gone around yet. You know, uh, he hasn't sat down with the elders and mm. the, uh, the. And of course, he's not the uh, candidate. Yes, he's not the candidate. He's just uh, an, he's aspirant. an aspirant. Exactly. Yeah. So that that will come. I mean, he will face what others have faced. But on the other comment you made about uh, inclusiveness of you know that's a program practically every other presidential candidate, including Buhari, mm. uh, or presidential aspirant, including Buhari. Uh, uh, as, you know that that's something they insist on. But his statement. Uh, just a few days ago, as well as in his uh, last minute movement for left for China, mm. he met with the women, he met with the youth, he met with various groups and so on, and said, who we'll include it? And in fact, if you go by the percentages, they're all dishing out. We wonder who, where 100% will stand. They're saying 30% for, for, uh, for youths, 45% mm. for women, <laughs> and so on. I remember one of these events, somebody was saying, what, what, what is there for young men and for, for men and so on? Mm. So it goes back and forth that uh, it's uh, a settled issue in this presidential cycle that the youth and the women will be fully well represented and that is, so he's saying what it's not very new but it's good that he's saying it also well i mean would hope that the youths are fully represented i mean according to the demographics although this country hasn't had a proper census in ages i mean it, it seems to suggest that 60 percent of nigeria's population is under 35. but i mean professor uh Jibo, he did say uh, saraki that nigerian youths look up to him 
And truth be told, I mean, when he made that announcement, there was a huge sort of um, uproar there. Um, I suppose construed as positive, but compared to some of the other more gerontocratic politicians in Nigeria, he does have age on his side, doesn't he? Yeah, he definitely has uh, age on his side, but he also has privilege on his side. Mm. And the problem for Nigerian youth is that the political class has been boxed by people who have a lot of privilege. Privilege in terms of uh, financial resources, privilege um, in terms of family pedigree and uh, background, and thirdly, privilege in terms of political networks. Yeah, but is, that is, is, is that, is that their, really the case? Because, I mean, you talk about family sort of pedigree. Uh, I, I just, a lot of the people who actually are what they call old families, in the sense that they were part of the bedrock of, of this country, have been actually been turfed out. And I think part of the problem is that most of the people who are in politics simply don't have that pedigreed background and that is why most of them lean the way they do I mean towards corruption and all kinds of things that are that are inimical to the progress of this country I think uh, the fact of the matter is a lot of the grand families of Nigerian politics uh, have uh, done their transition and some of the younger generations have not engaged the political terrain. Mm. But there are still some families that have uh, remained very firmly in politics. Well, and certainly the his family. The Saraki has. family yeah, is absolutely. one of those, and that's why I thought it was legitimate mm. to make the point. Yes, I, I agree mm. with that. Um, mm. Professor Wazurika, he is, of course, in addition to his family pedigree, a medical doctor by training, but he's never really got into it. Uh, I think he veered into politics. Is that right? Oh, yes. And he's done many other things besides. He was mm. a banker, uh, involved with uh, the, uh, the old bank that didn't make it eventually. Uh, he's been in business for the most part. He's been a politician, governor, mm. senate president, and so on. And I would say very clearly that, um, you know, Nigeria is a country of interest. And somehow or other, somebody emerges from almost nowhere. Mm. If you remember what happened in the 60s, but far more in the 70s, right up to the Abiola era, uh, many people rose through the ranks. And then, you know, there is a very interesting pattern of uh, class mobility and political mobility in Nigeria that mm. uh, is very fascinating. There are no genuine barriers. You know, one good deal, somebody shoots at the top. As long as you can solve people's problems, you know, you're, you're fine. Mm. So, uh, you know, Nigerians expect the uh, politicians to become, to be philanthropists, for instance, to be people who look after them, to mm. be people who speak to issues of interest. Now, what are those issues? Some of them are ethnic, some of them are religious, some of them are uh, perhaps even economic and so on. But what we find is that we've also boxed ourselves in constitutionally with the zone of principle. They don't say you're a great man in Ebony. Does that really make you a great man in uh, mm. Oshu State? I mean, there are too many states that is no longer, it's no longer the rather pastoral, rather simpler system of the 1960s. This is right. a very complex issue. Each of the states, no matter how small uh, that state is, is very complex with all kinds of competing interests. So I think in thinking about Nigeria, we need to think of the concept of interest and the, the whole question of who champions what interests on behalf of whom and how many of these people are. Mm. For instance, uh, Buhari clearly championed a particular anti-corruption mantra that propelled him forward and mm. so on. Whether that's real or not is almost irrelevant to his people. It's almost like what is happening with Trump in America. He used to be, uh, we used to live in the same town and you know, I just can't believe. America uh, first. <laughs> America clearly has uh, tremendous resonance with a lot of people. basically shook up the system in ways both positive and I would say mostly negative, but we'll see. Mm. It's still a journey. So part of it is that People can become something in this country on their own terrain. And regardless of class background, socioeconomic background, because, you know, we, we, we have a dual system here. People are members of certain economic segments mm. from a classical analytical standpoint, but also they're members of certain cultural groups mm. that are equally important. Absolutely. Also. And this talk between culture and class privilege continues uh, as it were. So you don't know exactly somebody, where somebody's going to land at any point. Is he pursuing his own class interest, or is he pursuing his own uh, ethno-cultural or other interest? Very interesting. Gentlemen, please stay with us. We're going to take a short break. You're watching Nigeria, the road to 2019. Plenty more still ahead, including we continue our chat with our two seasoned observers of the Nigerian political scene. We ask whether 
whether any of the politicians who are lining up to challenge President Buhari have actually put out credible manifestos. Stay with us.